welcome back to the show. Uh, always a pleasure to see our next guest. He is a very, very busy man, both with his own projects and helping out with other projects. Yes, and, and he was just dancing up a storm to our theme music, which actually I kind quite of surfing. enjoy. Yes, he's a little bit doing a little bit of the stir. Yeah. Well, you didn't see the view on the Beach now? Boys last night. I mean, I'm old, but boy, they Holy is smokes. really Were they Wasn't shocking. Smokes days old. Wasn't it shocking? <laughs> I've said that to a bunch of people today because I, I sort of, it's such a they youthful. Like cadaver. It was like this geriatric, yeah. uh, you know, uh, old folks home and everybody gave them a guitar. Yeah, but, but the good it was thing just... was it made me feel young. Yeah. But then I, I started to question whether that was all lip synced or not. I think it was helped uh, out. Because those voices because, sounded awfully young. <laughs> mostly because his lips were <laughs> moving. <laughs> moving. <laughs> I didn't see a thing. It was crazy. Yeah, so oh, so right. You're a busy man indeed. You're opening The Crucible. Yes. Uh, first of all, tell us about The Crucible, the story behind it. It's Arthur Miller, of course. It's Arthur Miller, and I think everybody knows the story. It's the Salem Witch Trials. Yeah. So, of course, when you're coming to the show, you go, you know, everybody knows that it was all about the witches and that the girls were lying. So that's what you start with as the premise, and really the exploration is in all of the deceit and treachery and how this was a vengeance of a young girl's scorn. So it's all really, it's great, great for Valentine's Day. It's about infidelity, <laughs> love, lust, death, maybe? greed, yeah. death in the end. Yeah. It's really Witch quite hunts. lovely. I think it sounds romantic. Uh, was, no. this, uh, was this your project or, or did someone bring you on board to direct? Or? No, I, I'm at Capilano. I teach at Capilano yeah. and we do three, sh uh, four shows a year. One of them is a musical and the other three shows and the crucible was chosen and then I was asked to direct the crucible and and who chooses it because it's always fascinating to me that that decision you know like right time right place and, and well sort of we for... we the committee meets and decides on what they feel they were going to do in next season and mm -hmm. usually it's to try to bring more people into the theater yeah. um, it was just a coincidence and then what I love is that then everybody goes off and we've made the season and then in April we sit down with everybody else at all the other universities and find out that six other people are doing the crucible um, <laughs> just but, like, it goes in way like directing. next year I'm going to do um, Sly Fox Right. You're so. directing do you to the casting? Well, with the students, yes. Okay. I have to sit down and cast the show with using the students as the base, and that's why I decide it's going to be in the show. Excellent nice. stuff. So people can see it February 15th through the 18th at yes. Capilano University. Now, do not miss it. Switch yep. hats. We're going to talk to you as a casting director now because yes. there's all kinds Rawr. of things uh, going on. <laughs> and uh, The Gray with uh, Liam Neeson. And well, yeah. No, it was a tr Joe Carnahan is just really such a fabulous guy's guy director. And I think that what, what made that show really work was, you know, when they went up to Ladysmith and it was like freezing cold that you know that that that's part of what made it work yeah. was that they all had to get to they actually were kind of miserable they were <laughs> miserable and they were cold and, and yeah. one of the actors from here that was in this show just said that it was the first couple days were so brutal that everybody kind of just gelled together but you couldn't fake being cold because you, you were, were freezing your absolutely butt off. freezing now, your Liam butt off. Neeson, I love him he's done quite a few movies yeah. up here what is the gray about well the gray is about um, a group of um, um, mine workers and their plane crashes as they're leaving and they're forced to um, try to make it through with the wolves attacking them. So it's kind of... What do you look for? I mean, when you are casting something like this, and obviously you're casting for an ensemble and, and you're sort of looking at, is it each character? Are you looking at the ensemble? Are you looking at how they're going to fit together? Or is it just this specific person? And that's well, with what Joe, I, I really showed him the most interesting, eccentric um, choices of great actors that I could find because I knew that he would then piece what he had. And that's the whole point. If you're only going to see eight actors on the screen, everybody has to be individual. Right. Yeah. Nobody and can be sort of like somebody else. Yeah. And I guess having Liam Neeson as uh, your lead, yeah. a and lot it of was thought. right after his wife passed away. Yeah. And there's a whole re element of the film where I've heard he, him sees, talk about this. he yeah. sees a woman that he thinks is his dead wife yeah and i had said to joe are you sure that liam oh yeah no he yeah he wants to do this i heard an interview with man. him where yeah. he actually talked about uh in a strange way how cathartic that was yeah, to, to just sort of you know get it out get it out there have it talked about do all the interviews and and then you can well and also i think if bit. you have to play it then you have to go through that experience and then that's part not yeah. that it's 
you know, I don't think the audience ever got suddenly goes, ooh, I don't want to watch this because it's like roadkill. Yeah. You know, I think that they really, they, they empathize and it allowed him some great... And he's a very well-liked actor. ...paid for psychotherapy. There yes. you go. And the other actors need to be cold and wet and miserable to be cold and wet and miserable. Absolutely. There you go. So uh, let's move on to Steven Seagal uh, with a little something called <laughs> True Justice. Your face says it all, really, well, Stuart. we do this. this <laughs> we, uh, my partner, actually, my business partner, um, Sean Cossey, does the casting for that show. But it's really interesting because it's all about how um, anybody just and especially an actor of the the years and stature of Steven Seagal just has a just a vision of how the populace sees them there's a there was a moment last season where because um, it'll just have been airing now where where he had to turn around and punch an actor in the face and so he punched that actor not in the face but he you know they faked it and the actor fell down and then the actor started to get up and Steven said well why is he getting up and they said, well, because he has more scenes to shoot that connect him into the script. He said, no, if, he, if I punched him out, no, he wouldn't get up. <laughs> Which is his milieu. And so, of course, that everybody had to go over to try to figure out a rewrite that would make it work. So that or, guy never gets up again. Well, no, it. he did. I mean, they, they, um, they, they did something to allow him to get up for, to complete the story, but I don't, But that was what the reality I was. Do a lot of actors oh, have that kind goodness. of leeway, or do you just have to tolerate it with certain people? Oh, no, people? I, think that, I think that they have that kind of leeway if they're, if they're of that yeah, level. Sure. I mean, the whole show is only being made because it's got Steven's Jeez. name So on if it. I punched Michael in the face, would he get up or not? Yeah, I would cry. You would cry. <laughs> yeah, for a long time. Yeah. Both emotionally okay, and uh, physically. Mike always cries when we bring up Twilight because he loves it so much <laughs> and because he's torn between uh, which team to be on with the two leads. Now, uh, I'm a Jacob. I forget the other one. Jacob and Edward, aren't they? Edward. Yeah, Edward yeah, right. Come on, but dude. But there's a point, you know, like, what is it? It's, it's oh, tomorrow. It comes out for Valentine's Day in DVD. Yeah. And so then the second part is just about ready to come out. And I got a call last week from North Carolina asking to be in Breaking Dawn. <laughs> And I was speechless. Me. Thought, <laughs> Someone how, phoned you and was like, Stuart, how do I get into Breaking Dawn? It would be like maybe if you could go back in a time machine a year ago <laughs> when we shot it. it the, the Breaking Dawn is real. Might think it's that they real. could get it's in a their a time real, machine It's so go. amazing that, you know, just when those of us who are in the business think that, oh, well, people understand what the they strain. They don't. They don't. They have no clue about what the, it's all a mystery to them. But do you find it amusing, made. though? Because, I mean, Twilight has been a phenom like we haven't seen in so long. You must just get a kick out of it. You, I'm sure you get a little sick of people bothering you, too. But it must be funny from your perspective. Well, yes, it is because something that, you know, it's not like rocket science or the cure of cancer. And yeah. suddenly, so, you know, I'll be known for the next 10 years for having done that show, that series of shows. It's a bit peculiar, that level. I mean, yes, huge amounts of money and all yeah. of those kinds of things. But, but it's cool in a way, too, right? Because it's an experience that not many people get to have to be associated with this sort of thing that became this iconic franchise. Well, it's the same thing as, I, mean, I, don't, I don't really see, I mean, yes, I mean, people might split hairs and say the Harry Potter franchise is better than the, than the yeah. um, Twilight franchise. But the basic bo bottom line is there is a huge amount of people that want that. Mm -hmm. And so if you're appealing to those people, and that's what we do. We're in the business to entertain, yeah. to get people to come and watch movies and to separate themselves from their reality. Mission accomplished. accomplished. Big right. time. Well, we also big, want big people time. to get out there and go see theater. And uh, the Crucible runs from February 15th through the 18th. It's playing at Capilano University. You can Great go to the program. website on your screen right now to find out more. Thank you so much. Thank you Always so nice much. to Thank see you. Great to see you guys Always a again. pleasure. We're going to take a break.